were all the books that I read in 2019. I know this video is late but I've done one for the last few years in a row and I didn't want to not make one so better late than never. Goodreads tells me that I read 32 books in 2019 although I don't think it counted my reread of Monstrous so I think it's actually 33. I have a feeling my goal was 34 five books. Totals 7,971 pages but again not including my monstrous reread. How many pages is monstrous? So it's more like 8,172. The shortest book I read was Bloodborne The Death of Sleep which I didn't really understand. I haven't played the games. It was short and I figured why not. My boyfriend got it so I thought it might be interesting and it was okay. I was just very confused because I didn't really understand what was going on. The longest book was The Hate You Give which is 464 pages. The most popular book being Harry Potter and the Philosopher's Stone. I have never read Harry Potter before and this was my first time reading it. It was okay. It didn't blow me away or anything but then again it's only the first book and I know the story well because I grew up watching and loving the films. I have yet to decide if I'm going to continue with this series because it feels like one of those things I want to do before I die but at the same time I don't know if I have a ton of interest right now although the audiobook was quite fun and soothing and also JK Rowling has grown more and more problematic as time goes on. I have yet to decide but I love the films and Harry Potter was like a part of my growing up so I'm not sure yet if I'm gonna continue or not we'll see. The least popular book was the Bloodborne graphic novel and my average rating according to Goodreads was 3.9 but we all know that I hate the star systems I prefer to rate things out of 10 because that gives me a little more of a leeway I think although I still end up typically rating things on the upper half of that scale. I still prefer it. It was the year of the graphic novel it would seem. I read quite a few. I also read a decent amount of non-fiction between Melanie Murphy and Hannah Witten who are two YouTubers who are very lovely and I recommend as well as a bunch of travel fiction for a travel fiction class I was taking and a couple memoirs I think in there as well. Colette. A decent amount of adult fiction as well which I don't tend to read tons of but I loved all of these including lullaby which you can't see some of these were for a class I was taking these two i don't know if these are classics but i was reading them for my dissertation clockwork orange is a classic room is another adult which i read and loved did i only read two ya novels i stand corrected i read three ya novels stolen which was for a story i was writing by most likely two which i started in the summer when i was away and then i finished i think later on in the year this is the companion novel to my life next door i loved and enjoyed both of these and again but better by christine Muccio, otherwise known as poland bananas books who i love and adore i've been watching her for so many years i'm so excited to get this one i've been in the midst of editing the book talk since i read it last year it will be up in the near future i hope dominated a lot by school reading i'll hopefully have the video on all the books i read in my second year up soon and then i can make one on the books i read in my third year i haven't thought about my top five or which ones were my favorites before filming this and so now i'm sat here looking at them all and i don't know i do want to give this one a quick mention because it was one of the very first books i read and i really really enjoyed it if you like melanie murphy at all i highly recommend it i could hear her saying the things on the page it just made me really happy to read i feel like i just want to put all of them into different sections because i don't know how to compare them to one another wait four ya novels the hate you give is ya oh jeez. of all the non-fiction i read which is four different travel fiction type of books as well as colette the pure and the impure my favorite was definitely tracks by robin davidson i read this one in a day and listening to her journey it was just so inspiring and adventurous and crazy and i just i loved it so much i got so attached to it look at all the non-fiction i read the most non-fiction books that i've read in a year and then of the graphic novels this is hard I really had so much fun reading the inbred academy the first two i can barely remember them now blue is the warmest color i enjoyed I wasn't blown away by it I don't think I want to say I had one or two problems with it look on my goodreads 
if you want to know. I feel like I wrote a decent amount on this one. We have Saga, the first two. I think I read this one before and it was a reread to read the second one. I feel like it's too early in for me to have tons of opinions, apart from the fact they're fun, I'm enjoying them, and I think the overarching story is going to be something really spectacular. There's Pumpkinhead by Rainbow Rowell and Faith Erin Hicks, and this was so cute. It's such a great autumnal read, like around Halloween. I would highly recommend it. It wasn't, again, anything like blew me away. It was really fun and cute, and I'm definitely going to reread this one this Halloween. And then we have the first two installments in Monstrous. I bought it because I really liked the cover, and then I flicked through and I liked the art style. And I read it, and it was okay, but... I was a little bit confused because it's high fantasy so I reread the first one again to refresh myself and I enjoyed it so much more the second time around because it all just made so much more sense and then I really enjoyed the second one but I have since read the other two that are currently out and I am in love with this series I'm actually up to date on this one I've not reading them in comics form I'm waiting for them to come out in these find ups I'm loving these so these were probably my favorite in terms of the graphic novels this is where it gets hard so we have four YA 10 adult books I read these three as research for my dissertation. The Boo Fruit Jungle was definitely my favorite. I loved this. It was great. <laughs> Stalin was fun. I enjoyed it. It definitely stuck with me, but it wasn't anything stellar again. And this is where it gets hard because the rest of these, I really enjoyed all of them. And I think all of them have stuck with me in different ways. So picking between them is hard. Lullaby is a thriller. It was really interesting. I enjoyed it a lot. Don't think it makes the top five though. <laughs> it's paining me. These two, I guess, were the two cutesy contemporary reads that I read this year, and I'm, I don't know whether either of them would go in my top five because they're cutesy contemporary reads, and a lot of these other ones have really, really hard, deep themes in them, so it's hard to compare them. Yeah, I did really enjoy both of them. I wasn't in love with this when I first started it, but then I switched to the audiobook, which is narrated by Army Hammer, who actually plays, I can't remember his name, what is his name? Oliver. <laughs> plays Oliver in the film and I enjoyed it so much more once I switched to the audiobook. I think it was the writing, it was moving kind of slow and my mind just wasn't doing it justice but then hearing someone else say it, I was like wow this is so beautiful. Picking between these two would be really hard I think. Maybe the girls would win just about actually. Okay top five, number five we have The Girls by Emma Klein based on a cult and it was super interesting and I had so much fun reading it. Research the heck out of the Manson family after this one. Loved the time periodness of it. it. has all these feminist themes in it and it was so much fun. Then we have Conversations with Friends by Sally Rooney. I wasn't in love in love with it while reading it. I was enjoying it. Lots of interesting themes. It just wasn't blowing me away but it stuck with me so hard. I think about it all of the time. I now really want to read Normal People by Sally Rooney, which got so much hype when it came out. Okay, top three. I picked out my top three, but I didn't put them in order. Third place, we have The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. I think I give this an eight out of 10, maybe an 8.5. Fresh out of it was quite annoyed because of plot hole type things that I had wrong with it. I think I also had really high expectations going in because I expected that I would like it. The premise was something that I liked and I knew it was really atmospheric and I love that in a book, but I think about it quite a lot and I do think the story is really pretty and I think it's one of those that knowing that if I were to reread it knowing those problems I had with it I would enjoy it a lot more because I wouldn't have such a high standard going in like in my mind I think a bit more of an 8.5 leaning towards a 9 out of 10 rather than an 8 just because of how beautiful the atmosphere was and how the story has just like left an indent in me and I love it. Number two we have Room by Emma Donoghue. I loved this so much. I wasn't expecting to have as much as I would. I knew that it circled a while ago and that a film had come out and I was reading it for a class and then I ended up just loving it and devouring it and it was great. Give it like a 9 out of 10? Maybe a 10 out of 10. Oh, it's been so long since I've given something a 10 out of 10. Wow. Maybe a 9.5. 10 out of 10 just feels too steep for some reason. I don't really know why. It's it's up there. It's good. And then my favorite book I read, I guess, was The Hate You Gave by Angie Thomas. Again, I read this for class, so I heard the hype about it. It's one of these books that like, I knew that I wanted to read someday, but I didn't really know a ton of what it was about. I'm so glad that I had to read it for this class. It was so good. I love the main character so much and she was so strong and hearing about her journey it raises so many very important themes around the black lives matter movement and i cannot recommend this one enough and the discussions we had about it afterwards were so interesting and it's it's obviously very very unrelatable to me a white person living in england i'm fortunate enough that it felt very different and foreign to me and so i think reading this one is so important and i cannot i just it was so good it was so good a 10 out of 10 loved it
favourite book of the year. I'm so glad. I think it deserves all of the praise. What was my favourite cover of the year? Very important question now. And this one's really shiny. It's the collector's edition. I found it for the same price as the regular edition so I figured why not. And look at how shiny. I really like the cover of Lullaby. I like how it was striking. It is and how it's just like a neck and it does look like a kid's neck now that I look at it. Which is relevant. It's about a babysitter. It's very creepy which is also relevant. It's a thriller. And her other novel has like a similar theme going on with the cover. It also has like a neck but a, a, obviously a different top. And I, I like this vibe going on. I think it's really clever. I really like the cover of The Girls. I think this one's quite striking and it works really well with the book and it has that 70s vibe and I love the bold colours there. Spine on the boys most likely too can we just talk about it for a second because look at how gorgeous i didn't film a video for this one i don't think i'm going to i i didn't take notes or anything while reading it i didn't enjoy it as much as the first one i don't think i think i give it a 9 out of 10 i'd give this one more like an 8 out of 10 it has some really interesting themes in it though and if you enjoyed and read my life next door i would highly recommend this one as well and naked is a really nice color too but my favorite cover of the year i think has to go to the night circus i just love this aesthetic this is my aesthetic in a book essentially maybe if we could switch out the red for purple it would be it that would we would be there look at it naked look at how gorgeous and it's got the stripes it's just so cool my most disappointing read of the year my least favorite would probably be this one i didn't like it very much i thought it was really slow interesting to learn about the history that was going on there but other than that it was slow and just difficult to read so those were the books that i read in 2019 that is all i have for you today thank you so much for watching i hope you have an amazing morning afternoon evening slash night my name is jade i hope i see you again next time goodbye books everywhere what after having read oh my goodness i have forgotten one gosh darn it it's so hard filming on my bed everything's just like wobbly I can barely see my viewfinder. I have no idea what I look like right now. I'm filming it in June <laughs> and it's hot. We're here in the midst of a heat wave. <sighs> if only you could see how much I've destroyed my bookshelf in the making of this. Look, look at this. This is what I've been sitting in. My shelves are just collapsed and ruined. I don't, I don't even know how I'm going to put that one back together. That is going to be painful to do.